I grew some stuff. Chris Anderson says we are all makers, born makers, and many of us retain that love in our hobbies and our passions. If you love to cook, you're a kitchen maker, and your stove is your workbench. If you love to plant, you're a garden maker, knitting, sewing, beading, cross-stitching, scrapbooking, all making. The maker movement has given us a new reference point for understanding how knowledge is constructed, how we make sense of the natural and human created world, and how we organize and empower individuals toward a particular proclivity, a tendency to do something regularly. Several years ago, I started an experiment Partially inspired by the many back to the land movements, I wanted to create a socially, economically, and ecologically sustainable way of life on an average sized lot in a city. Secondly, as a homeschool parent, I wanted to teach my children how to think about the world and show them that they can create a meaningful life for themselves. What started as a plan to reduce my ecological footprint and model behaviors for my children resulted in a deeper understanding about making and maker education. Before I started this process, I started thinking about food. Food, the seemingly innocuous activity of eating. Where does our food come from? How is it made? What is in our food? What effect does our food choices have on our health, our environment, our society, our economy? When you think about it, our food system is a rather complex process with some adverse environmental consequences. On approximately an eighth of an acre of land, I started tinkering with our food system traditional row gardening, raised beds, hugo culture, to name a few. In this process, I learned something. I learned I can grow stuff. Now, that might not seem that significant, but when you make something that you're proud of, it builds confidence. Confidence in your ability to understand concepts and use what you know to create a physical object. It's what Dale Doherty calls a maker mindset, a growth mindset that encourages students to believe that they can learn to do anything. He summarizes it with the question, what can you do with what you know? Because I grew some stuff, I'm motivated to grow more stuff, more aligned with nature, using less energy and resources. Is there a viable alternative to our current food system? How much food can I grow? What effect will it have on my food choices? You see, when you respond to an authentic situation and make something, you're learning, which is a continuous lifelong process that results from acting in situations. That is the essence of maker education. A multi-year research project out of the Harvard Graduate School of Education found that the most striking benefits of maker education is the sense of inspiration that students take away. They begin to see themselves as actors in the community empowered to engage with and shape the design dimensions of their world. Students might acquire a kind of disposition they call maker empowerment. In my house, we have a principle that's been passed down through generations. Take what you have, make what you need. My son Joshua, a media maker, wanted a way to attach a camera to himself or his bike so that he can capture live footage while riding. We could have purchased something, but he wanted to make it. His tendency to act in this situation and use his ability to create rather than consume. A fine example of maker empowerment. There's always existed a tension between technology and nature, industry and agriculture, man and machine. Many people have yearned to escape the machine with fantasies of living with less malcontented cogs in the machine of life, consuming products, chasing happiness. I too had dreams of escaping the machine. The reality is there's no escape, only reconciliation. Proponents that praise the potential of making say that it will ignite a new system of democratized manufacturing and inspire a shift from a consumer mentality to a producer mentality. To put it another way, the potential exists to reconceptualize the nature of work, promote individual satisfaction through skilled work rather than consumption. As I, Ivan Illich says, seek satisfaction in what we can do for ourselves as opposed to satisfaction in commodities. Ostensibly, making is skilled work, and makers are a passionate community of individuals self-organized around a common purpose with access to tools and technology. 
Reconciliation, then, really is a matter of design and politics, how we organize our resources and create public spaces, both natural and industrial spaces, that might shift us from an ownership model to an access model, from unsustainable practices and technologies to socio-ecological cohesion. I grew some stuff. But I also created an environment, a green space, a garden, where more stuff can be made, and satisfaction derived through self-guided tinkering, thinking, designing, and making. Maker education has the potential to empower individuals to think critically, enable them to reach their full potential, and encourage them to be active participants in designing and shaping their world. It is a disposition, a mindset, a belief that a better world is possible, and we can make it. What can you do with what you know? Thank you.